Hey guys, Affinity Photo 2.6 was released a couple of months ago. And one of the headline features on that particular release was some AI tools. Was this the can the money flowing through Serif now and bringing the kind of Photoshop goodies that Adobe have been adding to their software for years now, finally coming to fruition in the darling of the anti-Adobe world affinity photo. I saw a few videos on YouTube with people talking very hushed tones about how good the object selection and the subject selection was. And so of course I updated affinity photo. I am a paid user of the software. And I also downloaded a heap of test photographs from Unsplash. So I could put it through its paces and I decided to compare it against Adobe Photoshop and another bit of software that I have, which has AI subject selection, which is Pixelmator Pro. It used to be an independent product, but is of course now fully owned by a small tech company you may have heard of called Apple. So I used subject selection and then did some object selection too, but mainly AI subject selection tests using a variety of images, some of which were deliberately very testing. I wasn't expecting perfection from these things because it's such a, a vague subject sometimes. What is and isn't the subject of a photograph? It's a difficult and very nuanced thing to do, but I was interested and seeing how all the different apps handled it. I've added them all into a single document in Adobe Photoshop, just so we can compare them. So without further ado, let's get into Photoshop and have a look at the results. Here is our first example, Jessica. And let's just turn off those there. I'll show you the original, sorry, right there. As you can see, it's quite a difficult image to cut. I've got all these flyaway hairs here and I've got a faint background behind the, the window, shop window, whatever it is that the models stood in front of. So let's turn off the original photo, turn on the results. And I would give this win to Pixelmator Pro without a shadow of a doubt. If you look at the flyaway hair, it's done a far superior job on the top of here. It's included a bit of the bokeh, but we'll forgive it for that. Uh, also a really nice job in the hair here. Affinity Photos just done some weird primitive sort of cutout. It's crap. We've also got the edge color showing through. Photoshop's done slightly better. It's got a few of the flyaway hairs at the back here. Slightly better job down the side. So I need to lop out this portion of the image underneath her hand. Uh, and also, if you've noticed, Photoshop's included part of the, the wall she's just stood in front of it. So. I would give that number one to Pixelmator Pro. I'd still give second to Photoshop, even with the inclusion of the wall, because the hair is far better. And then this kind of blocky outline in Affinity Photo, I would definitely give third. Pixelmator Pro for the win there. Here's our next test example. As you can see, I chose it just kind of dark image. So that is the stock photo that I tested it on. And here is how they did. Let's have a quick zoom in. I'm going to give this win again to Pixelmator Pro. If you look at the top of the hairline in Affinity Photo, you've got the background showing through. If we go back to the original, I can show you that there is actually air there. So that's the background. It should not be included as part of the subject. In the case of Affinity Photo, it's included it. Pixelmator Pro has not neither has Photoshop. Photoshop buggered up this bit on the side a bit. It's taken away the earring completely and the detail behind it. It's kind of one of those edge cases here. It's difficult to decide is this dark area part of her hair or part of the background. So Affinity Photo has also included part of the background here again and the rest of it's looking okay. A bit of ghosting there on her arm. And in Pixelmator Pro, I think the only real mistake this has made is that if you can look at the necklace, that's been excluded. So the mask is showing through here. But 
you know, it's done a beautiful job here. Look, it's isolated the earring. <laughs> it's decided that this was all background. I mean, look at this hair. You know, this is absolutely spot on. Nothing showing through here. It's done a brilliant job at the top and the bottom. Yeah, big thumbs up, Pixel Mano Pro. Okay, here is our next test photo, a photograph of a Porsche in a garage. Again, I downloaded from Unsplash. Incidentally, if you want to download these photos from Unsplash yourself, I will put the file names in the description below. So feel free to download these and test them yourself. So we've got a car in a garage here. The subject to this photo is pretty bloody obvious, isn't it? It's the sodding great Porsche car. Let's see how they did. So we'll start with the AI subject selection. And can you see the mistake that Affinity Photos made here? <laughs> yes, when I said AI subject selection, it decided to select part of the car park as well. This is a very tricky image. Let's go back to the original for one second and explain why. What is subject here? Is it the shadow? Do we decide that the shadow is part of the subject too? But on the face of it, this should be relatively easy to separate from the background. We've got the red here and this kind of turquoisey blue. So let's turn those back on. Photoshop has done a fairly dodgy job on the car roof there. It's not great. It's chopped off side of the mirror. We're missing parts of the bonnet. It's included part of the shadow underneath for no particular reason. It's half assed the wheel on the back and a finny photo. We've got the roof, obviously. We've got the shonky looking wheels with weird sort of feathering ghosting going on. It's half assed the roof line. It's completely removed the wind mirror. Let's have a look at Pixel Mater. It's done a nicer job on the roof. There's still some kind of weirdness going on there, but definitely a lot cleaner than Photoshop. Where is it? There. Don't know what was going on with that. It's done a weird job on this door. Includes a little bit of the shadow under the car, a bit of shadow here. The wind mirrors. Good, given the fact that Affinity decided the car part was the subject as well. I'm going to give this one again to Pixelmator. None of these are usable immediately, of course. You'd have to fix up every single one of these masks. But it's interesting to see how this AI subject selection does. And before we move on to the next one, I just wanted to show you the results of the object selection. Now, object selection should do better. And in my testy, it does because it's guided by a human. You know, you, dr you drag a, a brush around, basically. You tell it, you point it in the right direction. It's guided AI. And Photoshop, we've got a nice crisp result. It's fairly usable straight out of the can here. Kind of a one-click job with this as well, with the object selection tool. I mean, you've probably finessed this uh, shadowy area under the car a little bit and fix up this tire, maybe, but it wouldn't be a hard job to fix that up. It's pretty good. Affinity Photo has done relatively well as well. It's done a manky job on the roof line. We've got some weirdness going on on the wing mirror. Front grille's looking okay. Okay on the wheel. Some weird feathering going on here, but a lot better. And Pixelmator Pro has done a, a really nice job. We've selected quite a bit of the shadow. It's decided that shadow should be part of this object. I'm inclined to agree. It's, if I was cutting this out, I have to say I would include the shadow too. We've got a nice clean skyline. So again, even on object selection, I'm going to give that to Pixelmator Pro. Here's our fourth subject, a tree on a tropical beach. I chose this particular stock photo because I wanted to see how they do with separation of the sky from the tree through the fronds of the tree branches. Photoshop has done a fairly shitty job. It looks a bit like they just dragged the polygon brush or, uh, selection tool around there as made absolutely no effort to remove the sky from the fronds. I think I could have done better with a pair of scissors and a scrapbook than uh, Photoshop's done there. Affinity Photo, meanwhile, has managed to do even worse. I mean, this is just terrible in every way. We've got way more of the sky showing through. They're both pretty bad. Ne neither of these are at all usable. They've made no effort whatsoever to isolate, get rid of the sky here and select the actual subject which is the tree and the branches. Pixelmator has made a valiant effort. I mean, it's failed too. We've got quite a bit of ghosting and some sky showing through in portions, but compare these two images. It's like night and day. It's done a far 
superior job in every way. Definitely another win for Pixelmator on that one, I have to say. So here is our last test photo, and I really wanted to push them. This is a horrible thing to try and, you know, what is the subject of this? We've got this incredibly problematic separation of the individual from the background. It's quite blurry. It's noisy. What is all this here? What's going on? Does We, we can kind of work out his arm must come round here but you know what's this is this subject to this part of this that's part of the mic stand what's going on here but i wanted to push the software and let's have a little look so let's do the subject first and you, as you can see felt a shot spectacular fail on that one We've got nothing much to say about that we've got basically a bit of bottom part of the mic stand and the dude's wristwatch and like the cigar floating in thin air it's just shit isn't it affinity photo has done a much better job got nice separation around the hand the microphone weirdness going on here but relatively easy to fix up we have got haloing so it's ghosted the edge here we've got some poor edge separation going on here but it is a testing image and i don't blame any of them for messing out really i had a trouble separating this with the pencil and bezier curves pixelmator has decided that this portion here is part of the subject too to include this lower portion of the mic stand and it's removed this area here it's close but i mean again i'm gonna have to give this to pixelmator pro i just think it's done a far better job and let's have a quick look at how they did with object selection photoshop's done a much 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 better job on this one pretty clean and usable i had to fix up this again but that's okay got some sort of bright pink lines there where we've got some feathering going on hands looking good much 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 cleaner affinity is actually worse than it, with the object selection tool than it was with the ai subject selection tool lost the microphone it's messed up the hand part of his mouth We've got a weird floating bit down here. Pixelmator hasn't fared quite as well either. We've lost the wristwatch and the lower portion, kind of messy here. But again, it's done a really nice job on these edges. Beautiful, clean edge delineation between the subject and the background. As I mentioned at the start, I also ran these through the acclaimed AI remove.bg tool ponied up 15 bucks and ran these images through it to see how it did and these are the results so here's the first one run through remove.bg it's done a really nice job on the edges it's caught a few of the flyaway hairs it's done a beautiful job on this side definitely the cleanest job there but i think pixelmator pro did a better job on the hair and definitely on edge delineation but still that's pretty clean definitely better than affinity or photoshop that's for sure here's the second one and it's hard to fault this in any way shape or form beautiful clean edge delineation on the hair here the gap at the uh, the hairline on the top there really nice job on the side there I'd say that was probably better than all of the other test cases. Waiting to see this one though. This is the Porsche and that's what we get. Now I did absolutely nothing to this. It's just done a beautiful, beautiful job cutting it out. Look, it's got this beautiful feathered shadow underneath. Perfect roof line, perfect on the wing mirrors. Absolutely 100% ready to go straight into whatever you're using your for with no messing. It's like night and day with that one. Just brilliant. Here's the tree. Again, done a really nice job. Such a tough image. But look, it's removed all of the sky. I can't see any patches work showing through. Pretty flawless. Maybe just here, but I'm being picky. Definitely, again, the best. Uh, better than any of the three software applications. And here's the last one. Uh, this one struggled with this one too. We have got some fringing on the edge here where it's kind of ghosted the edge. It's not as crisp as Pixelmator Pro, but it's not as smooth. It's kind of smooth this out to fix this mask up. Really nice job on the hand. We've got the proper gap here. Again, in this instance, I would probably even given that we're missing this portion down the bottom, I'd probably give that one to remove.bg as well. So there you go, guys. Some surprising results, I'm sure you'll agree. Main takeaway from me was that the AI subject selection in Photoshop sucked under pretty much all circumstances. 
Affinity Photo was pretty bloody dodgy too. Not very good at all. Not usable masking really in any way, shape or form. And Pixelmator Pro, which has never made a big thing at its AI subject selection, was absolutely the best of the three by some margin. But if you want a solution that works quickly and gives you usable results, subjects isolated from backgrounds that you can use quickly and simply, then the takeaway from all of this is that you have to pay for the honor and remove.bg, well, well, it's far and away the best of all of them, far better than any of the three apps that I tested. 10 credits, cost me 15 Australian dollars. And that'll do us for this little test. As I said, I'll include the links, not the links, but the names to the five stock photos that are used in this test in the description below. So feel free to go off to Unsplash and download them yourself. Just put that file name in the search window and the buffer will come up and you can test it yourself uh, and see how they do with the AI subject and the AI object selection. Anyway, guys, that will do is for this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, Please remember to leave me a comment below telling me how you get on with these AI tools. And remember to like it, put the YouTube arrow in my direction, and subscribe if you enjoyed this content or got value from it, or hopefully both. All right, that'll do us. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.